today I'm presenting you the mysteries of myth the lost and tribes so we will take an picture of what we will be we'll be talking about as a gist where today's presentation includes an introduction and faithful order with the feats the northern kingdom falls babylon take over and post captive terminologies gathering as one anti-semitism and sources so we would like to introduce a covenant which is put by put by god with abraham where god told to abraham that genesis verse 12 verse 1 2 3 were the summary of that is who will bless them will be blessed and who will curse them will be cursed who will curse the israel will be cursed and who will bless them like you if you bless them you will get a blessing from god so this is the key thing in this covenant where you can see in this past also like the kingdoms fall if they start to curse israel and if they are walking into god these things you always works even in when assyrians came like when sanakari was ruling that time assyrians tried to capture israel and hezekiah the king prayed prayed to god and god sent his angel and that night his one angel slew more than 185,000 that's how the power of God with, the, with this covenant and God always used to protect its Israel from all these enemies and other you can see the faith watered with their feet where when uh, the thing is that the two kingdoms were splitted after Solomon's re regime and it came to Rehoboam and people <coughs> People just came and tell that, uh, that that the load they're bearing they can't hold that much tax and all. So they came and cried to Rehoboam and Rehoboam didn't uh, take it anything seriously. So he just tell that uh, I'll if Solomon done that much, my father done that much, I'll do more than that. So people rebelled with them and they gone to two two separate kingdoms. One is southern kingdom where Judah and Benjamin where the northern kingdom uh, kingdom is the other ten tribes so this is the when the uh, like you you, all, you know that there's a uh, jerusalem is sitting in the southern kingdom so every jew must attend three festivals minimum three so they used to come to jerusalem and for these festivals so the, uh, why the king in northern kingdom uh, Jeroboam understand that if they are going to the again to Jerusalem it will be a it will be backstabbing for him because people again start to go behind the Rehoboam the kingdom of south and his kingdom will be fallen because of that so he made a foolish decision in his entire career that he made two idols of molten gold uh, like gold calves and he started to he ordered the people to pray with that and he placed one in the Bethel and one in the Dan so that's how it's it's uh, like the idolatry in the northern kingdom started so the uh, Jeroboam was ruling at bc 930 and this uh, this process was going the idolatry of uh, like a lot of people was I, I idolatry and uh, like praying to these uh, idols so the uh, like when the first jewel came lot of people uh, like levites and uh, other faithful people start to migrate to the south because the idolatry is high in northern kingdom because uh, they don't want to they don't want to praise god and pray to god the yahweh uh, our creator they just want to make politically correct so because of their lust towards man like material stuff they done these things and uh, the result of that god made assyrians to conquer the northern kingdom when uh, in between before that in between the these these things like nearly some years passed away so the rain was going and uh, the the were <coughs> when Hezekiah was ruling in the south he called years uh, after the deportation of assyrians the king Hezekiah judah issued to call all israel to come and worship in jerusalem and celebrate the passover and eight years later the king jo joshua josiah of judah also issued a call 
and an offering for temple was received from from Manasseh and Ephraim and all the remnants of Israel. So these southern king, uh, southern king kings were which are very like their their hearts are towards God. Always want the other other Israels to worship the real God, the Yahweh. Uh, yeah, Yahweh Elohim. So they want to like they really want to try these uh, northern people, the idolaters, to get back to their what their forefathers and uh, their grandparents and all those like Israel. Israel was meant to do to pray to the real God, but uh, these people, most of them, denied and gone to these idolaters. They tried lot. But a lot of them came to southern kingdom and start to place their homes over there. And eventually all tribes of all twelve tribes were represented in the southern south and God even addressed the twelve tribes in the south speak up to Rehoboam the son of Solomon king of Judah and to all Israel in Ju Judah and Benjamin the tribes of Judah in Kings chapter 17 verse 18 is used idiomatically for the southern kingdom when en encountered the tribal desi designations it is important to distinguish between the territories and to allocate the tribes and people themselves so that that's how it's happened and the and the the key details of how the northern kingdom fall into the Assyrians were in 7, 724 BC where Shalomar 5th besieged Samaria for three years. King Hosea of Israel attempted to revolt against paying Assyrian annual tribute money. A treaty with Pharaoh of Egypt did not help. Yeah, the God told the Israel to, to pray to him and they must put their trust and faith in God. God only, not the Pharaoh. He used to he used to tell them with uh, many prophets, and they didn't listen to that. So at last, uh, the these materialistic people start to get like Pharaoh have a lot of chariots and footmen forward. So they thought that the Pharaoh can help, but uh, if they have if they have changed their course to uh, uh, the idolatry and change change to like if they came to god and pray for his mercy he will definitely help this northern kingdom you can see in the story of nineveh where the the gentiles in the nineveh really pray to god and god made you can see that god made that that a decision of um, d decision of firefall from heaven not happen or destruction of Nineveh didn't happen so this is the same God here and telling them that you need to come to me not to these materialistic things then when the cap the Assyrians came and besieged all the Samaria or northern northern kingdom the their policy is something like mixing of other people so the if if Assyrians are conquering a place what they will do is that if there will be an ethnic group so at group of common like if you have a common hereditary so you have connections so what they have done is something they mixed with other people so they will take some of the people from a region and they will, then they will, they will go to they will take them to the b region and they will like that they will use to mix with all the mingle co-mingle with others so they don't have an uh, like core core identity or ideas with that they like they have a split diverse thinking and all those so in this diverse wo a diverse manner they can rule lot of regions so in the, those times Assyrians were the the main conquerors of the world and the, so you can read that how uh, that in the two kings chapter 17 and <clears throat> the population they have taken it's about uh, 27 28000 around around 28,000 people so they are mixed with the other parts and the like the scholars uh, measured how like counted how much the northern kingdom have it's around four four hundred thousand or uh, five hundred thousand so it's uh, like they have only took the one one the one one 
20 part like one part of 20 it's a small part so the rest of the israel was there itself but they have come mingled with the others uh, so that the uh, the like the lineage was broken and it became mixed that's why they are called uh, as uh, Samari samaritans in the new testament and then the Assyrians was conquered by the Babylon. So it's a chance where you can see that these uh, these tribes are commingled with the <coughs> even the uh, tribes of the south where southern kingdom was conquered by the Babylonians. So Babylonians eventually took uh, the Assyrians also. The, so this commingling of Jews and uh, these Samaritans might have happened. It used to happen and the, and the Babylonians took over. That's the next key part where Northern Kingdom went into captivity in 722 BC. All 12 tribes also represented in the south when the Babylonians took Southern Kingdom into captive in 586 BC. Members of 12 tribes of Israel were in, involved in Asheia prophecy where Judah referred to them as the house of Jacob which are also which are called by the name of Israel. In Asia chapter 48 verse 1 and in 12 verse 14 described and then we move on to, so the, the mixing of these people from the Samaritans and the Jews Jew, from the Judah like southern kingdom happened in this Babylonian time so the post captivity terminology were after the Babylonian ca captivity the term Jews and Israels are also interchangeable and Ezra calls returning remnant and Jews eight times and Israel 40 times in the Ezra Ezra chapter and it, in the Ezra chapter 2 verse 70 in 3 verse 11 8 verse 33 and 10 verse 25 so in Ezra in, in a particular these verses it's also written as all Israel so if the God is talking about all Israel it means that all tribe must be there so in Nehemiah used the term Jew 11 times and Israel 22 times and Nehemiah 2 speaks of all Israel being back in the land in Nehemiah chapter 12 verse 47 and the remnant who returned from Babylon is represented as the nation and Malachi 1 1. The same is true in the New Testament and Old Testament said to have offered himself to the nations and lost sheep of the house of Israel in Matthew 10 chapter 5 verse 6 and in 5 15 verse 24. Tribe other than Judah are mentioned specifically in the New Testament as being represented in the land. And you don't you know that already, right? Anna knew the her tribal identity was of the tribe of Asher. So Asher was one of the tribe uh, like if these uh, people used to tell that missing tribe but she she was there when Jesus was for going for baptism. Uh, she was there in the eighth day. Uh, it's not baptism. She was there in the eighth day uh, for circ circumcision. And uh, Paul knew he was the tribe of Benjamin, a Jew and a Israelite in Romans 11 verse 1. So even Paul talks about the his lineage as a Benjamin and same time he used to tell us he's, he's a Jew also. The New Testament speak of Israel 75 times and use the word Jew 184 times. At the feast of Pentecost, Peter cries, yeah, men of Judah, Acts chapter 2 verse 14. And in the next, after a couple of words, yeah, men of Israel, Acts chapter 22 verse, verse 2 verse 22. And all house of Israel adds two verse 36 in the same speech he used to add all these things so the Holy Spirit is undermining that there is no nothing like there is a lost run tribes it's there already next we want to regathering as a one in Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 37 chapter 36 and 37 the dry bone vision declares that Jew, Judah and Israel shall be joined as one and regathered this is true today because the total physical descendants are not people to whom the promise were made. In chapter 9, 4 verses 7, you can read God have a plan and it, it will be executed because he knows beginning and ending. He's outside the time. So he, he anti-Semitic move. We're, we're accompanying some of the legends of 
so called lost run types are an expression of the present state of israel and the people being regathered in the land these various theories such as british israel israelism are as their nature of anti semitism because they deny the jewish people their proper place in the plan of god and let's remember the genesis 12 verse 3 has never been repelled there are lot of sources you can get and one of them is the louis david and like all the can israel survive in a hostile world it was published by new leaf press in 1993 by Lu- louis and david allen and david allen and the scofield ci the new scofield study bible note on 2 kings chapter 18 verse 23 so you can learn about that and the verses you can learn from are on the right side so you go and check it out and uh, make like let the holy spirit and like thank you god bless you amen